You can support this show at patreon.com slash ASA podcasting. Welcome to a Skyrimatic podcast where I will discuss my adventures and misadventures through Skyrim. Join me. Add your stories, add your tales. Let's uh, let's get into this thing. What is up, everyone? Uh, I'm back. All right, so I started Dawn Guard Quest like I was supposed to. Finally, um, I'm about halfway through it right now, I believe. And I've been trying to play it fast as hell. God, this cl- <laughs> this quest is long. The main Dawn Guard Quest, that is. First, I, it took me like a fucking hour to find the entrance to get to the place. <laughs> I haven't, it's been a while since I, I went, walked down the road and had to find the entrance. And I just kept walking past, I, I was looking on the wrong side of the trail, I guess. Because I guess the uh, entrance is on the opposite side you would think it's on. And I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. So I finally found the entrance. Uh, I went up, talked to Israel and all that, blah, blah, blah. And he sent me out to see what's going on, Dim Hollow Crypt, um, which is where, you, for those who have played, where you get um, Serana. So I went there, you know, sneaking around. That's a uh, pretty cool, pretty cool cave. You can take some serious long bow shots. Oh, right now I'm playing on Master. Um, I up the level up to Master for now because that. Uh, it's a fair challenge at, at the level on that. So, yeah, so there, there's some really cool long shots you can take because there's that big, uh, like, circular area where where Serana is when you get inside the cave or inside uh, Dim Hollow Crypt, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're up, like, on a balcony, and you can shoot all the way across and and nail whoever the few vampires that happen to be over there and there's some death hounds around and stuff like that. So you can take some serious, serious long archery shots, which is cool. Um, so I get Serana and, uh, we work our way out of there and then we head back to, uh, take her back to her, her family home there out in the water where Harkin is. So we head out, we find the boat up, up outside of, uh, I think it's outside of Dawnstar, but anyway, it's on the North coast. And take the boat out to the island. Um, this time I turned down being the vampire from Harkin. I tried to play it different than I had. The, the first two times I did it either way. You know, one each way. One going with him, one going against. This time I went against him, but then later on down the road I decided to become a vampire. But that's a different story. So I turned it down, Harkin. He banishes you, blah, blah, blah. You find out some backstory, a lot of talking. So I get back. I, I let Isran know what happened. And he tells me, he's like, you know, dickish as usual. And sends me out to recruit Gunmar and Serene. Uh, Gunmar, I walked past like 12 times because he was crouching down on the side of the road. And I didn't see him because <laughs> it was like dusk. So it took me like 10 minutes. I'm like, where? <laughs> I was running back and forth like a million times. I'm like, where the frig is this guy? So I found him. Uh, and did what he needed me to do. And. Then found Serene. Uh, when you find Serene, just listen to what she's saying, and you'll be able to find her stuff for her. She says, I don't know, where she needs what? The, not the cogs, but the uh, spheres or something. So get both of them, recruit both of them, and then uh, Serana pops up over at the Dongard, for, Fort Dongard over there and lets everybody in on uh, her father Harkin's plan. And, of course, this Ron is a dick to her because <laughs> that's what he does. So I need to go find a moss priest to read the scroll. We find out there's one uh, kind of wandering through town, track him down. And uh, we find <clears throat> the uh, we find his carriage outside of uh, Dragon Bridge. It's been attacked by vamps, and there's a cave nearby where we got to go, go rescue him. So... That was like, you know, you kind of go in the cave, he's he's trapped, and, you know, just pick off some, some vamps. Nothing crazy. 
I found Serana was actually much better. The uh, the AI on Serana was much better than it used to be. Like when I sneak, she wasn't running ahead and doing stuff and getting in the way as much. Um, where the last, I, mean, I don't know if it was the last time I played it, but last time I played this quest, maybe the time before that, the first time, um, she was really clunky and always getting in the way and always running ahead and things like that. So, it, yeah, she was much more manageable this time. When I was sneaking, she would sneak and people wouldn't see us. Yeah, so that was good. Uh, so we head back. And we we got to find her mom, so we're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, maybe she's hiding in the castle. So we go there, and we do the whole spiel. And that's a pretty cool thing, sneaking through the castle. you got to battle a bunch of uh, gargoyles and some other stuff. Um, and, that you know, do the whole moon dial thing in the courtyard and head into the soul cairn, which is a really uneventful area other than finding her mother. I mean, there's the horse thing. Uh, the horse's name is escaping me at the moment. And the fi- I've never found the book, all the pages of the book for the guy, because that seems really incredibly tedious. Um, I'd like to do the horse one again, because it gives you him when you need him. You can uh, kind of conjure him when you need him. But uh, you go in, you find her mom. She's kind of in- up at this fort and stuck behind some kind of uh, barrier and you have to go knock out what's allowing the barrier to to be there these um what are they called i forgot i forget what those guys are called the hell are they called i don't know the three guys in the tower oh the keepers that's it boneyard keepers so get inside and you got to battle dernveer and he's the so I did get to battle a dragon oddly enough, and he's the one you can. I wonder if I can. I don't know if I can summon him or not. I guess I can. So I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try summoning him since I, I haven't started the dragon thing. And uh, then I went off to the college to find out more about the scroll and find uh, Septimus Cygnus in the ice. So right now that's where I'm at. I, I headed off to Alf, Alftaland and. Um, there's a bunch of spiders or dwarven spiders and spheres in there. And uh, that's kind of the first part of uh, on my way to kind of Blackreach because that's part of that quest. So when you're going into Offland, there's a uh, – after you go through this one area, there's um, these three pistons on your left that are working up and down. Uh, if you use them to get up on the ledge above, there's some some treasure up there. It's not a great treasure, but it, it's pretty fun. It's something that it, they, it's really kind of funky because you don't look like you're on them when you're on them. But uh, yeah, there's there's a way to get up to another ledge. Uh, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm ready to head into to Blackreach and all that. So once I finish up this part of the quest, once I finish up the Dawn Card. The uh, Dawn Guard quest completely. Uh, that's when I'm going to switch characters. So, because right now I'm up to, uh, I think I'm at level 48. So, uh, I've slowed down my leveling because I haven't really tried to level anything. I've just been playing, and uh, my enchanting is at like 99. So I may just go to 100 just to uh, get the double enchants. So that that you know, those are always cool to have. <laughs> But I don't really need to level up anymore. I, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with this character where it's at. And then I'll start my next one, which is going to be... I think it's going to be a Dark Elf. I'm like 90% sure on that. And my basic rules are going to be... No fast travel except for unloading gear. Which, just because I don't have a lot of time to play, I have to do that. Because I can't just you know, be stuck with gear and take four days to wander somewhere. I just don't have the time to do that. So, unfortunately. So, it's going to gonna be that. Uh, I'm going to think I'm going to specialize in uh, specialize in destruction and conjuration. And uh, also some alchemy, a little one-handed, and uh, some of the other magic skills. I'm not going to do any smithing. And the only actual weapons I'll use, other than conjured, are the daggers. I think that's what I'll that's that's what I'm going to set out for myself. And uh, a 
upon uh, many people's uh, recommendations, I came up with a little bit of a backstory. Nothing too uh, extravagant because I've never done that before. So um, basically his personality is he's a loner and uh, a thief and a murderer. But – and he's a survivalist essentially. Um, basically he is, his parents were murdered by Nords while traveling through Skyrim in his adolescence. Um, alone in the wilderness, he honed his survival skills, vowing revenge on all Nords. Most of his history is murky, and his thieving exploits have remained unnoticed by the guild. So, that should be fun. Because then I'll focus on, on specific things and not others. Um, I'm going to start off probably hitting mages. or th- You know what? I'll start off with thieves, because I started mages on this character. And... <clears throat> Sorry about that. So I'll start off with thieves and then go over to Mages College after that. So, and I'll probably do thieves, mages, and Dark Brotherhood because that seems to fit with his uh, his agenda, <laughs> just so to speak. It'll be different because I've always done smithing. It's always been one of my big things I did playing. So I'm gonna not smith at all. And see what happens, because uh, that's weird. I, I don't. I've never played that way, <laughs> so I'm not going to smith. I'm going to try not using armor, just go like straight up mage. Maybe use a leather armor or something. But I'll I'll try not using an armor, and uh, I'm going to do my best to stick to those rules. But uh, yeah, I'm going to finish up Dawn Guard. Maybe I'll get to play a little bit today. I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully, I'll get through that. God, I didn't realize how goddamn long it was. It's way longer than I remember. <laughs> And I'm playing it like as the fastest way possible. I'm not like wasting. I'm not, like I'm fast traveling to everywhere just to get through it. Just because I want to. I guess. Well, I know the two dragons are going to be there in the ice. I assume. So I, I just want to see what happens with that. <laughs> I don't know why that has my curiosity, but it does. So I'm going to blow through that, and then I will be starting the new character. Um, maybe I'll record again this weekend if I have some few minutes. But um. That's been this episode. You can reach me at a schematic podcast at gmail dot com. Um, I did start a Facebook group, uh, facebook dot com slash group slash a schematic podcast slash. Uh, so you can go there. It's a closed group. You just have to ask, and I'll add you in. Um, it's just for Skyrim discussion. Nothing big in there. Nothing exciting. Yeah, just a uh, general Skyrim talk. And what else was I thinking? Oh no, that was it. Okay. Yep, just a quick one. I had a few minutes. Figured I'd run down and record this real quick. And maybe I'll get to play a Dawn Guard for about 20 minutes or so right now. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, been a while since I did one. I did get to play a bunch last week. Uh, first of all, uh, you can send in any feedback to skyromaticpodcast at gmail.com. And there is a Facebook group where a couple of us are... <clears throat> putting stuff up, it's uh, facebook.com slash groups slash uh, podcast. So anyway, I did start a new character. I quit Dongard in the middle of the last character. I was like, yeah, I just had enough with this guy. So I started the mage character. Um, so after the whole Helgen mess, uh, I actually did wander towards uh, Riverwood, which I don't usually do, but I did. And I use the Mage Stone so I can get so up my uh, magic skills quicker. And I stopped at um, Ember Shard Mine on the way, which was just a like bandit battle. So I used that to, you know, I went in there. I, I stopped at a couple places like that, battled a little bit just to build some stuff up and get some stuff to sell. Uh, sold off the stuff and, you know, did the little smithing tutorial with Alvar. <clears throat> then uh headed over to White uh White River Watch. And um so there you go, you're you're battling the you come up the hill. That's on, like you're kinda on your way to Riverwood and it's off to the right on the other side of the river there. Uh or no, I'm sorry, you're going from Riverwood to White Run and it's down the waterfall and off to the right and all that. But so I went up there and um there's two bandits outside, so I battle them. And you get inside, and there's a blind guy, 
and he tells you basically where the bandit chief is. So that's a cool little cave. Not not huge, just, you know, typical little bandit cave. So I did a few of those to kind of build up my skills since uh, they weren't real strong. I'm not using – the only armor pieces I'm using are the braces and the um, boots. Uh, other than that, I have a hood or a shroud or whatever. And they, I think it's a hood. I don't have a shroud right now. It's a hood, and uh, right now I got some better robes. But when you're when you're leaving Helgen, <clears throat> and you get, start getting your gear and stuff, I obviously I used armor there because you don't really have much of a choice. And then um, I think you get to the Helgen prison or something like that, and there is a guy in a cage and he's got major stuff on so you can get stuff there it was just novice gear uh i think i've upped it a little bit since then not much but a little bit since then i forget what i have now exactly but uh yeah i hit that up then uh i still didn't make it to white run and i went over to gray winter watch but those trolls over there and i was only like level two and i was uh, not quite ready to battle trolls yet, so I ran away. <laughs> I tried, and then I ran away. Uh, I, I hit them with, like, I think I only had flames at that point. I hit them with flames, and flames are, you know, pretty good on trolls, and, like, nothing happened to them. I was like, yeah, let me get out of here. So I ran away, ended up uh, at uh, Red Aran's Retreat, which was uh, which is a um, another bandit area. I, it took me a while to get through there. I worked on it quite a bit, you know, just to uh, be able to beat the uh, chief, obviously, who is, who is uh, the toughest one in these places. I'm just going to pull it up so I can remember what the heck it looks like. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I pulled that out. <laughs> I want to pull it up on the uh, wiki. So it's been like a week since I played this. So trying to keep it fresh in my mind when you're old is, is tough. Um, <laughs> yeah, so really the toughest part of those for me what is the chief. Because you really have to do... What I found was a lot of times... Um, I've been working mainly overall... When I'm working on a character, or not working it, when I've been playing it, I've been focusing mostly on, I've decided to go fire. Uh, I use a little bit of other stuff here and there, but mostly fire mage. So I have uh, the bolts, or not the bolts, fireballs, the, um, obviously the flames, and the rune, the fire rune. So I've been using those, and I also... With this character, I'm doing the double daggers with sneaking. But I'm not really doing any smithing, so the daggers aren't super strong. <clears throat> um, and what else have I used? Once in a while, like if I happen to have a two-handed sword and I run out of magicka, I'll use that. Mostly against mages, though. I was going up against a mage in one cave. I forget which one it was. But um, it was like the boss of that cave or whatever. And I ran out of magicka. So I was like, well, I guess I better do something <laughs> because I didn't really have any potions at that point. It was pretty early on. So, uh, you know, early on you kind of got to do what you got to do, but, uh, pretty strictly using destruction, sneaking daggers, things like that, you know, and, uh, I'm, re I'm really like playing that way. I did, uh, wander over to, uh, Dustman's Cairn. Where there's, you know, some, just a little one-room thing. I think there's a bigger quest involved with that one that I'm not doing right now. But um, there's three Draugr in there, used magic, and then the last one I was out of Magicka, so I used the double daggers, and that was pretty cool. Um, also wandered over to Hamvir's Rest, which is just a bunch of skeletons and a chest, but uh took me a while to unlock it because it was a master level one. And uh, my lock picking wasn't very good yet. Then I ended up uh, over at Morthal, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> and uh, that's where the... Well, I like this one. This is that um, the little ghost girl, and you have to find out what happened to her. 
I did that quest. Uh, I'm like halfway through it. I'm not finished it yet. I know what happened to her, and her father knows what happened. And now I just have to uh, finish that one off. Uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, a couple of the other places I hit were I was on my way. Uh, well, I am. I just made it to Riften now. Let's put it that way. I was going from, I stopped at White Run a few times and sold some stuff and bought some stuff and worked on some enchanting and alchemy. Uh, I've been, I was using that area to, you know, be able to buy some spells from the, um, the mage up at, uh, Dragon's Reach. I forget his name offhand. And so that's kind of where I've been working from and just exploring out from that area. Um, also, well, and then I decided, you know, I'm going to go do the Thieves Guild. So I I did the walk from White Run to um, Riften, but I went via Windhelm. <laughs> I ended up all the way up at Windhelm. So while I was at Windhelm, I did I started the Dark Brotherhood quest by, or I picked up the quest to be able to start the Dark Brotherhood quest, which is uh, Adventus Verit that guy, the kid in Windhelm, Adventus or something like that. But uh, he wants. That uh, what something the kind I forget her name. God, I'm drawing a blank this morning. But the orphanage, the person who runs the orphanage in Riften. So it's like a two for one deal there. I'm going to start the thieves guild, and I can start Dark Brotherhood all at once. So it works out perfectly. But yeah, I I did wander from there, and I tried to get the bound bow. On the way, I was like, oh, "That'll be cool. I'll have that. That'll be. Then I don't have to carry any kind of other bow or anything, because I did have a bow in the beginning for a little bit, but I wasn't really using it. Um, mostly, for, I was using it for soul trapping mostly, but then I was able to get the soul trap spell, so I, I kind of stopped using it after that. So it worked for that because I, I had some soul gems, but I needed to start getting some to be able to do some enchanting, and that was the problem I was having because I've been going real heavy on the alchemy." Really bumping that up. Uh, most of my points have been... Well, all of my points, main points, have been put into Magicka. And as far as the trees go, sneaking is where I've put the most. Um, I just did the sneak... Uh, I think I just added the one for the bow, where you get three times damage with the bow or something like that. Uh, I'm one away from getting the 15 times damage with from sneaking from behind with the daggers. So that's the one I really, really want. And, uh, yeah, I've been bumping up the lower ones, too. You know, 40% uh, sneak and things like that. Muffled movements. So sneaking's big for me on this character. I'm, I'm really going to go heavy on the sneak. Put some into destruction, obviously, and, and onto the fire side of the destruction. Um, a point here or there on things like uh, restoration, alteration, just so I can cast those spells a little cheaper. Not nothing crazy there. Uh, nothing on any armors. Um, uh, enchanting. I don't think I've done enough to be able to do any. I think I did the first level bump up on enchanting. That's um. I think that's the first one I did. That's the only one I did on enchanting so far. Mm, I'm trying to think what else. I haven't really... I think I'm level 16 right now. Yeah, I did I did level up quite a bit last weekend. But unfortunately, I haven't been able to play it all week. So now <laughs> my mind is, like, burned. It's been one of those weeks. But, um, yeah, I've been super heavy on the destruction is starting that's starting to slow down as far as uh leveling up um did i put any in one hand it no i don't believe i did because my i'm still using like steel daggers but um i did i did enchant them and i i did smith them up but i mean you can only you don't really get to smith them up very much when you're not putting anything into smithing which is weird for me because I'm usually big on smithing. But the, the good thing is without wearing any – I've never played this way and you're so much lighter <laughs> like because you have no armor or anything and the robes don't weigh anything. I found a, a pair of elven boots, so I am wearing them. I smith them up. Um, 
No, I didn't smith them up because I can't. They're elven. Sorry. <laughs> I enchanted them, not smith them up. Uh, but my enchantments aren't real strong right now. But I, I definitely want to go heavy on enchantments and alchemy once I get my destruction and whatever other magic I'm going to use. I, I have a few more spells now. I have um, I have the three fire ones. I do have some sparks. Uh, I have, I think sparks you get in the beginning now. I, so one or two of the, fr- I, I have the frost. I don't have the bolts. I don't think frost bolts. Uh, or ice bolts. Uh, I do have clairvoyance, which I never use. I have muffle, which I have been using a lot, and stone flesh. Those two I, I use when I'm running around all the time. Those are very, very handy. Oh, and <laughs> because of my uh, my character's backstory where he is a loner who hates everybody, and especially Nords, and... And pretty much anybody else. It, it was weird. I stumbled I, when I was in Windhelm. I ended up stumbling across the Civil War storyline. But it, I, I'm not going to play that at all because it doesn't make sense for this character. He wouldn't be on either side. It doesn't matter to him. But, like, anytime I'm walking down the road and the Imperial Guards are coming by with a prisoner, I set him free and then kill them all. That's, yeah, because I figured that's what he would do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I came across the fisherman in the hut. And he started talking to me, and I just lit him up with fireballs. I was like, yep, that's that's pretty much what this guy would do. Uh, I steal everything I can. I've been pickpocketing as many people as I can. Uh, mostly that guard in White Run who uh, stands between the two shops. <laughs> He's a good play. He's a good person to pickpocket. But uh, now that my sneak is getting a much better, I- I'm, I'm able to pickpocket a little more. It's tough in the beginning because everybody hears you <laughs> no matter what you do. So, and I did get caught once where I had to pay the stuff back, you know, where you got to give pay the fine and give it them all, but give them back, uh, whatever you stolen or whatever. So I, I have done that. I have been caught. Um, but anyway, I did go, to, <laughs> I believe I was talking about the bound bow. So I, I went over there. And I cleared out most of the fort where the bow is at, the bound bow's at. And then I'm like, damn, wait, it wasn't in these two doors. Oh, it must be in that one over there. So I go over to that one, and my sneak is not good enough. When I got there, my sneak was still not good enough. And, like, as soon as I get in the door, I'm, like, crouched down, and there's a guy at a table in front of me, and, he's, and they eventually just see me and kill me. And they're pretty pretty strong in, in that room and i'm like oh son of a bitch i cannot so i tried it like 12 times <laughs> at least and just could not i was like oh f- fuck this i gotta come back <laughs> I, i'm not gonna make this right now there was just no way i i couldn't they were way 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 too strong for me so i left and i and i i'll probably get back there now that i'm a little more leveled up especially with the sneak that i'm a little more leveled up um yeah, so I, I'm at Riften. I'm going to start the Thieves Guild. I'm going to start uh, the Dark Brotherhood. I'm going to go through Thieves Guild first, though. Because I really want to lean on the thieving side with this guy. So I really want to build up some of my pickpocket and things like that. And be able to have places to fence. Maybe I will put some points in the speechcraft also. But uh, yeah, I did a lot of exploring between, say, Morthal, White Run. Windhelm and uh, not quite around Riften area yet, but uh, I'm over that way now. So I, I got to hit the area a little south and a little west of there, between there and White Run, or between there and the mountains, I should say. Oh, I did end up at. <laughs> I was climbing a mountain. You know how you randomly run up mountains. Uh, so and then I ended up at High Hrothgar, and I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> I was like, this path looks really familiar. What are these trolls doing here? Oh, oh, that's why they're here, because this is where I am. Oh, uh, but you can't get in there unless you have a quest. <laughs> so, but I did take all the stuff from out front that I could. I assume I'll do that quest. <clears throat> I've never done the dragon quest as a mage, so I, I think that would be pretty cool. I, I need to try that. Now that my guy's a little bit leveled up, I think I'll start that as well. Once I get done... Doing the Thieves Guild, I'll, and I'll mix in the Dark Brotherhood with it. 
I like to bounce back and forth between them because it's uh, it can get tedious just doing the one quest straight through, especially if you've done them several times, obviously. Uh, whereas if you know it's the first time doing them, it's cool to just concentrate on it. But I I, I like just bouncing around and whatever happens, kind of happens, kind of thing. But uh, that's kind of what uh what I've been doing over the past week or so. <clears throat> Sorry about that. It's early morning. Um, I do have, I believe I have some email here. Yes, I do. And like I said, uh, join us over at the group. We're just, uh, doing some basic Skyrim talking and things like that at the, uh, Facebook group. So, um, <coughs> Andrew, who is in the group, um, he started a new character and, um, he bought Skyrim five weeks ago and he, yeah, he's playing on the PS3. And he, you know, plays when he can, like most of us. I know for me, when I get a chance, I do, and then real life happens, and I can't. <laughs> because, unfortunately, real life is not Skyrim. I wish it were. Not really, because everybody gets killed in Skyrim, so that wouldn't be that fun, would it? Yeah, I guess real life is better than Skyrim, because uh, there's not hordes of bandits running around taking over houses and caves. So... Uh, he's uh he's playing as a female red guard right now because uh, and he named her uh Poit and I hope I said that correctly <laughs> and he's a level 40 with 100 in smithing and low 80s in enchanting I love that that's a good combination enchanting and smithing right there you can do some serious 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 damage and uh, everything else is significantly lower. Yeah, I, that's generally what happens to me. I'll smith a lot and enchant a lot, and everything else suffers. Or uh, well, and my archery is usually really high. Whereas this time it's not at all. And he's now just started using conjuration and illusion magic. And if you run around casting the muffle spell, it levels up fairly quickly. And that is very true. And it's something I do constantly. <laughs> I am constantly muffling and and uh. Uh, stone fleshing god I almost forgot what it was called I was going to call it stone armoring uh, he, he owns Breeze home in uh, Whiterun um, I have no home yet that's a problem I need to get a home so I can start keeping crap in it uh, and he has a marauding team consisting of Lydia Esburn and Barbus oh yeah because if you have all them that's cool he started the Esburn storyline, didn't finish it, so he follows him. And Esburn is very strong. Esburn's a badass with fireballs and a storm atronach. Uh, Barbus is a pain in the balls. Oh, speak quickly, quick aside. Yes, I quit the Dawnguard storyline with my other character because I know I said that uh, Serana was doing better. I lied. She wasn't. I quit because I was trying to pick off these vampires with arrows. And Serana kept running into me and pushing me off the shot as I shot it every time. And I'm like, I'm like, fuck this. I'm done. I'm done with her. Go back home to your father and go away. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Barbus has an act. Repu- yeah, Barbus is a pain in the balls, but he doesn't die for pushing me into corners and not letting me exit tight spaces. Yes. Yes, he does have that problem. Uh, I might finish his story soon so you can get rid of him. He is very handy, but he is a pain in the ass. I don't remember my first dog being so pushy. Yeah, no. this That dog is a pain in the ass. But he is very handy. Especially for doing the dragon storyline. Because uh, he can he can take some heat off of you. And quite literally, actually. And, uh, you know, you can go around and uh, take care of that dragon while he's focused on that stupid little dog. Uh, he's going to attach to Lydia. And there have been mul- multiple times now that after Esburn and Lydia have killed a common foe, a stray fireball will strike Lydia, sparking another battle between Lydia and Esburn. Yeah, that is a problem when you have multiple followers. <laughs> I've discovered that either fast traveling to your location or saving and reloading will cause them to quit killing each other. Yeah, that's generally what I do. I'll just fast travel on it all. Even if I fast travel like right next door, it, it generally resolves that issue. Uh, I made a sweet set of Daedric armor. With a fiery soul trap, with a fiery soul trap, Daedric Warhammer, damn, and bow set to boot. A chain and helmet and gauntlets with fortify archer, archery, and 
body armor or fortify heavy armor. The boots I fortified with muffle, and it is amazing it, the difference in the game while playing with this gear. Yeah, that is for sure. There is, oh, has anybody else gotten the, there's a set of ebony armor um, where when you get, I forget where you get it at. God damn, I can't remember. I had it on my one character. It's it's a set that's in the game, and you get it, and like if you get close to a person, it like drains their life out of them. Oh, it is badass. But it's really hard for sneaking up on people because when you get close to them, you start damaging them. <laughs> so, but it is cool because it just like steals the life out of them. It, I forget where you, I forget what quest that was from. Damn it! But that I like that armor. Right now, he's not doing anything anything specific. Uh, basically, just roaming the countryside. Oh, sorry about that. Basically, just roaming the countryside, poking my head into caves, and battling at various fortresses. Yeah, I've, that's basically what I've been doing. Uh, he loads up his soul gems with Lydia and then equips her with a fiery soul trap bow and axe set. Oh, that's a good idea. Now that he can one-shot giants with his Daedric bow, uh, he he keeps a, keep a couple soul gems with him. And after he gets over encumbered, he shifts. Yeah, that is the good thing about having the followers. Um, you can load all your crap onto them. I haven't had any followers yet. I don't know if I'll have a follower as a mage. I probably will once I start the the dragon story, just because uh, it's good to have somebody with you to, um, you know, take take some of the dragon's uh, wrath. Um, oh, I did get Murda's beacon. I got to go up there. I can start that. After 10 or so marauding trips, I gather all the materials from my chest, 5,000 plus pounds usually, and slowly walk around White Run getting rid of this stuff. Yeah, I've been there. You know what's uh, good to have when you do that? The, uh, <laughs> the whatchamacallit shout. Um, not Fusor Dao, the one. Wind Sprint, that's it. The Wind Sprint. <laughs> I, you don't know how many times I used that to get around White Run because I couldn't walk. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, he's doing the smithing and enchanting and all that in town and selling the stuff. That is the best way to do it for me. That's definitely the best way to do it. That, I find that's how it works out. But now, we had a little discussion in the group based off of this email about what, he want, you know, what quest to do next. <clears throat> Not the main quest, but of the uh, guild quests. Uh, Brotherhood, companions, uh, thieves, mages. And for me, I thought the mages was the best. Um, I put companions last. And thieves and brotherhood, I thought, were pretty similar. I like brotherhood. There's some annoying characters in that one, we'll say. But uh, I liked brotherhood. I liked brotherhood and thieves pretty equally. Um, but uh, for me, for me, the mages, I, I enjoy the most. And companions, I... It was good, but I found it got repetitive after a while. So I don't know if, and you always had to go out with one of them. So that one, maybe that was part of it, you know. But uh, I don't know. What, what let's see what other people think? Uh, how would you rank those for? For me, it's definitely I definitely put mages first and companions last. I I tend to shy away from the companions quest. And I don't know why. I mean, it, it's okay. It's not like it's a bad quest or anything. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how other people feel about those. But anyway, all right. <clears throat> Hopefully I will get to play some uh, later this evening, I hope, and get into the Thieves Guild and get into some other shenanigans around Riften. Can't wait to set that dude on fire in the tunnel who's going to come at me and try and punch me in the face. <laughs> The rat way. I'm losing my voice as we speak. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so hope, hopefully I can get those started today, and um, I'll be able to record a little sooner than last time. All right, everybody. Uh, Skyromatic Podcast Gmail dot com and Facebook dot com slash groups slash Skyromatic Podcast. Uh, it is a closed group, so you just have to ask for an invite. Only did that to word away spam, which I find happens in the open groups. All right, take it easy.
What's up, everyone? I feel like I should be drinking Guinness when I hear that music. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm back for another fabulous episode of Skyrim Active Podcast. Uh, you can... Email the show if you like at uh, skyrimaticpodcast at gmail.com. And there's a Facebook group where we talk about stuff about Skyrim at uh, facebook.com slash group slash skyrimaticpodcast. Uh, both are in the show notes. Anyway, so this week I uh, I did this quest. Um, I finally made it over to Riften. Um, and for why am I opening my notes? I accidentally hit something that I didn't mean to do. Anyway, I uh, headed over to... Riften, I finally made it over there to so I could start the Thieves Guild. And while I was there, I decided to uh, uh, do the beginning parts of uh, Dark Brotherhood, I guess you could say, where I went and took care of Grilad the Kind, I guess, I guess is her name, at the orphanage there. Snuck in there and uh, hit her helper with a fury spell, so her helper killed her. So <laughs> I got away scot-free there. I didn't. I didn't actually do anything to her. Uh, she's a witch anyway. She's mean to those kids. So I, I still have to go back to Windhelm to talk to the kid and uh, let him know I killed her. But um, yeah, I started up the thieves guild. Did all that part, you know, snuck through the ratway, through the tunnels and all. There's that freaking guy with the gloves who can punch the hell out of you. Ugh. I always forget he's there, and then he punches me and kills me. That was kind of annoying. (laughs) So, yeah, the rat way is generally pretty easy. Uh, I'm still going straight up magic, pretty much. I'm using a lot of runes right now. I just got the perk for five times further you can cast the runes. Uh, So I've been using them quite a bit. Uh, Still haven't put anything in anything else but magicka. I think I'm in, like, level 22 or 23 right now. Um, mostly I've put a lot into alchemy, building that up quite a bit, a little bit into enchanting, really haven't done a lot of enchanting, but, um, some into that and a lot into destruction. I started doing, uh, some of the other ones, illusion alteration, you know, for the novice and the apprentice level, because I want to cut the cost of those down, you know, the stone flesh and muffle. So I want to cut the cost of those down a bit because they suck up a bunch of my, a bunch of my magicka. But um, yeah. So I got into the thieves guild. Yeah, I did the whole pickpocket thing for Brynlov and the ring, in uh, Rift in there. <clears throat> Went down to um, the thieves guild and got went through the Golden Glow uh, quest. You know where you have to go out to the island there in a lake right outside of Rift in. And set the beehives on fire. And my favorite part is sneaking through the house and getting... There's that one section, though. I always forget, like, the sewers there or for where you can go into the basement. But anyway, so you sneak through the house and there's that one... That last part where you have to go down into the basement. I can never get past that guy. I should probably have an... If I had an invisibility potion, I probably could. But I'd use mine up. <laughs> so I ended up having to kill him. Uh, but I just snuck and, um, used a dagger because I have the 15 times now for sneak. Oh, that's the other thing I've been putting in sneak. I've been putting a lot in the sneak tree. Um, yep. So I did all that pickpocketed, cleared out the safe at golden glow, uh, continued on with the thieves guild and onto the hunting brew, hunting brew meadery quest part. Where you think you're just going to go kill some skeevers and poison the thing. And they turn out to be like super skeevers. And there's that dude down there who's making the super skeevers. <laughs> so that was fun. A lot of sneaking involved. A uh, lot of... Oh, I've been using some con- a lot of conjuration. I've been using the um, flame atronach a lot. Atronach a lot. Along with uh, some other things. So uh, really, really digging that. I need to. I probably need to build up my conjuration a little bit. I mean, as far as in the tree, to cut down the cost of that a little bit as well. Now that I think about it. But um, yeah. So I use the the flame atronach and then sneak around and, and hit things with some fireballs or whatever. And then I, I stay hidden pretty well because they are distracted pretty much by the atronach, depending on what it is. But um, yeah. So I blew through that part and met back up with uh, Maven Blackbriar, I think. 
whatever her name is. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank at the moment. So I'm going pretty good on the Thieves Guild thing. Um, I'll be going on to the next part of that next time. Uh, but anyway, while I was in Riften, I, there was somebody just wandering along. Uh, I believe it was an Argonian, as a matter of fact. Just wandering along and like here, take this, take this lexicon. I can't, ta- I can't handle it anymore. The voices in my head, they're driving me crazy. Just take this thing, blah blah blah, yada yada yada. You know, one of those random things that happens in uh, in Skyrim. So I, I get the lexicon and I'm have to take it out to eventual. Uh, yeah, one of those Dwemer words. And it that is a absolutely freaking awesome, awesome Twimmer ruin. Super long, you know, nice little story with it. And uh, so you head out there, you get to this ruin, and you, there's these four ghosts that appear, and you hear them talking about their you know their four thieves, the ghost of four thieves that had snuck in there, and ended up taking this lexicon. And uh, I guess it started, they heard voices and it started haunting them. But anyway, so you, you go through there and there's the Dwemer spiders and the spheres and the centurions or the guardian centurions, whatever they're called. And uh, it's just a nice long Dwemer. It probably took me, it was probably an hour of play time. May have been even a little longer. I did this last weekend, so I'm a little rusty in my brain on how long it took. But it was a nice long quest. I was really happy with it. I mean, I had done it a long time ago, but it, it's been quite a while. And, you know, this is a little side quest, and it was probably an hour solid of time. Now, I it took me a little longer because I'm I'm going straight magic, so I did a lot of sneaking, sending in some Atronax, laying back, sneaking up, throwing out another. You know, conjuring another one, you know, throwing down a rune. Yeah, I was taking my time and, and really thinking it through and, and going slow and taking it easy. And uh, <laughs> that sounded way hotter than it should have been. Anyway, so, yeah, I get through the whole thing and you put the the end. There's obviously the, what is that thing called? The Guardian Centurion, the big, you know, the big one. The big Dwemer guy. And the, you know. There was a lot of sneaking involved. I would go back and forth behind pillars and send out the Atronach and drop a uh, drop a rune and then run to the other side and drop another rune. Very cool. Really, really like that. I recommend people going and doing that one. Um, what else did I do? Um, and the only other thing I think I did, uh, Shimmer Mist Cave. Which was a nice uh, Falmer kind of, you know, area. It's, uh, I'm going to look it up real quick just to refresh my memory. Uh, yeah, it's right outside of White Run. I was at, I was I was running around outside of there and uh, ended up going over to Shimmer Mist. I, I was just wandering. I think I was coming back from... Maybe I was coming back from events you know, or whatever. Oh, I was probably finishing the metery. That's what it was when I ended up over there. Uh, so Shimmer Mist uh, KV, I hit there on my way back to from the metery, and uh, that's a it was a nice good nice long cave as well. Uh, the Falmer, they're they're not too hard to take care of. Um, oh, also I ended up uh, going back to Fort Amal, and I did get the Bound Bow. Um, with my sneak being much, much better now, I was able to get in there and, uh, take out, take out the two guys or the two mages that were right inside the doorway. Um, my, my, my sneak's pretty high and and I've put a lot into that tree. So, so that was was pretty good. And, uh, yeah, so Shimmer Mist is Falmer and Chara's. Yeah, it was a nice Falmer cave. Really dug that. So, yeah, I'm kind of out there wandering right now. I did a lot of working on the alchemy. I've really gotten that up pretty good. I'm making some good potions now. Uh, I've got enough money where I'm buying ingredients and selling the potions back because the potions I'm making are worth a good bit of money. 
I really have done almost no smithing whatsoever. That's weird to me. I I keep getting tempted to do it, but I resist. <laughs> So, but I mean, the other things I've done with this character, I've, I've stuck to the narrative of, of what I set up ahead of time. And, you know, I've like come across guys in fishing huts and I wiped them out. Um, you know, things like that. Uh, just, I took out some random, like anybody I randomly come across on the road, I just take them out. That's just the way I'm playing this character, which is kind of going to play into something else I have coming up here. But so that that's where I'm sitting right now, and uh, really, I'll probably just keep working the alchemy up. I need to get some more on the enchanting side. Uh, I'm starting to get some more items. Oh, I've been working on a lot of pickpocket as well. It's now that I started the thief skill quest, I've never really done heavy pickpocketing, so I'm. I'm finding that kind of fun. It's definitely a challenge, especially when you get caught <laughs> getting out of there. So I, I like doing that a lot. Um, I'm probably going to do the poisoner perk where, you know, you sneak the poison into the person's pocket, especially since I'm now, I'm, I'm, you know, busting out the alchemy. And the sneak, I might as well do the poisoner one where you can put the poison in the person's pocket and poisons them. So uh, I'm... I'm going to work on that, too, so that'll be awesome. And that should help me with any tougher enemies where I can sneak up, maybe uh, poison them or paralyze them and uh, hit them with uh, some double blades and, and some magic before they can get me. So I'm kind of playing this super sneaky sh- magic daggers, and that's about it. Uh, I sh- hopefully I'll get pretty close to finishing the uh, Thieves Guild soon. Uh, not sure when I'm going to get a chance to play a, a, a long extended game again. It's always nice when you can, uh, sit down and, and get it, you know, like two solid hours in. <laughs> it's like a dream, <laughs> but, um, anyway, so we did have, I did have some, uh, email it's, uh, from Dale from the paper cake podcast, which is an awesome, uh, comic podcast. If you, you know, if you're into comics, I definitely recommend it. It's like uh, it's like the Imperial Stout of comic podcasts, or a milk stout. I enjoy a nice milk stout, so we'll go with that. So he hasn't seen the uh, full game environment yet. He's a newer newer player, and uh, let's see. He wants to know if I have a pl- if there's a place, and this could be to anybody else as well, that I would call my favorite place in the game to soak up some scenery. You know. There, I really I like I like Blackreach. I like the look of it because it's unique. But when you get up on some of the hills, um, I'm trying to think where there's like this uh, one of those Forsworn areas. But you're you're right outside of it, and you're all the way. Or you know what? Oh, where you go with Esburn, the uh, the temple, Sky Temple, and you can sit off. You walk out on the uh, the back area there on like the the patio <laughs> i guess if you want to call it that and you can just look out over the mountains I, the detail when you can look out over the mountains and the valleys and things like that or even when you do meridia's beacon quest and she takes you up in the sky you can look around as you're going up and down it, that is awesome i really that I, I just it blows me away that they put that much detail into it um <clears throat> it's a tough call for him. Uh, he, he doesn't think he could decide. He would just start listing a, a crap load of places that seem to steep me in Skyrim lore and scenery. Oh, the Hunter's Cabin near Falkreath or the balcony of Dragonborn's Rift in Home. Yeah, those are those are very good. Yeah, there's so many. God, like even when you're just... Um, even in like the valley by white run there when you get up, especially when you get up higher in the hills and you can look down those are awesome i really dig that so the second question is one that's pretty cool to talk about too he stumbled upon what he thinks is a cannibal quest in mark hearth and uh if you don't want to know don't listen for the next few seconds boom yes it is (laughs) yeah so this quest yeah 
So he ended up doing the second part of the quest and helped the cannibal clear the cave of the Draugr for the for the temple. And uh, I did this recently too. I did this with my last character, and he just did. You know, it was in the quest log. Clear it off. To, you know, that's what we do. And he's pretty repulsed, and we'll try not to complete any more parts of the quest. But as far as he knows, the morality is very hazy and forgive, a forgiving issue in Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, it's not like uh, Fable where you get, like, the devil horns. Um, <laughs> the worst that will happen in-game if I did become a cannibal is the guards might say something to the fact. Yeah, they might call you, like, a uh, blood drinker or something. I don't know. Flesh lover. I don't know what they would call you. Um which is awful to me in real life, but they're just AI-controlled city cards. Meaning, if only for the quest experience, I would be tempted to finish the quest as to clear my quest log, knowing I probably wouldn't suffer for my actions in-game and still gain leveling experience for completing the quest. Personally, I don't mind the haziness of the morality of Skyrim most of the time, but cannibalism? Cripes, let me remove that quest from my log if I know I do not want to complete it. Your thoughts on the freedom to do what you want. That Yeah, that... I I have the same issue kind of with that quest, and there's some other quests that I have, you know. And, and I, I'm not like oh the gaming turns to real life kind of thing. That's it's not what this is about. It's just a you know about an uneasiness within the game world of doing things. Like even this character that I've set up as straight up bad and unfeeling and not caring who he takes out. I still have issues with that at times and when I play it that way. And it's always in me to not play it that way. But for the experience of doing it different, that, that I've been sticking to it. But yeah, the Cannibal Quest is definitely like a... Uh, it's just like, oh, God, uh, really? <laughs> it's, you know, it's one thing becoming a vampire or a, a werewolf. You know, yeah, these are things that are not real <laughs> you know theoretically they're not real you know uh, obviously there are people in vampire culture but they're not real vampires but whatever um but there are cannibals or people who have done cannibal things and you know maybe it's just a little too close to reality or something <laughs> but yeah i definitely see like, in general, I don't have a problem with most of the stuff in Skyrim because it's so fantasy-based, which is why I think I've... Like, I used to play Assassin's Creed a lot, and I enjoyed it mostly up until... And then they started getting... Then the last one, which I don't know if it's the last one or whatever, but I have one sitting upstairs that I've barely played, where the Revolutionary Warrior one... I don't know, and it just got started getting too close in history <laughs> or something. I don't know. And the same thing with Hitman. I used to really love playing it, and I still have the latest one sitting in the package unopened from launch day. And I don't know. I just lost my appetite for it, and it's not like a thing where I'm like, oh, my God, these are the worst. Yeah, it, that's not what I'm saying. It's just for, for personally for me, it's like uh, I don't know if that's that fits with my vibe right now in life. Whereas other people want to play it, God, yeah, no big deal. Doesn't, you know, they cause no harm to anyone in their games. Um, but yeah, that it's such a a fine like the morality issue is a tough one because like if I do the cannibal quest, <laughs> does that say I'm okay with cannibalism? Even in game, do you really want to be okay with cannibalism? It's one thing going and killing bandits. They're bandits. They're supposed to be killed. Or taking out... Like, even I felt bad uh, taking out... God, I can't remember the main dragon's name. Oh, my God. Uh, I felt bad even, you know, when Esbern wants you to kill him. I, I don't want to do that. You know? it's <laughs> He was nice. He's a good dude. You know, why, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to hurt him? He's always nice. You know, but I guess he has that history. And, you know, it's like, uh, take him out. Parthenax, that's it. Why couldn't I remember his name? Yeah, I didn't want to kill Parthenax because he's nice to you. 
the other dragons, yeah, kill them, whatever. They're coming after you to kill you. I guess it would be the same. Yeah, but the Dark Brotherhood, I don't necessarily have a problem with going out and just whacking people. Or, you know, when you're in a cabin and you got to kill the people. Those, those things are all fun. I don't know what, but I had the same issue with the cannibalism once. I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough question. Anybody else has any thoughts on that? Feel free. I'm sure mine are all jumbled because it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, I remember when I did the quest, I kind of felt the same thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll clear this out for you, but uh, I don't know if I want to help you out that much. Uh, and I kind of, I think I felt the same way about the Dark Brotherhood in Oblivion where you, you brought them there and there was the wheel and you killed all the people. I think I think that's how that worked. Ah, I always felt weird about that. You know, you're like, ah, come on. Or am I thinking of Fable? <laughs> I may be mixing up Fable and Oblivion. If I am, shoot me now, please. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a weird one. I don't know. I, I don't know. Morality-wise, for the most part, I have no issues the stealing and all that because it's not what I do in real life. It's just a game. But I don't know. I guess even though, yeah, even even the stealing thing with this character, I still, it's weird. Because I've never played a character this way, and it kind of goes against the grain of what I want to do. And the same thing would happen to me in uh, Fable or Fable 2, you know, where I would set up a character and be like, all right, I'm going to play this one straight bad and see what happens. But I always end up going the other way with it because it's just my natural tendency to go that way in game because I'm not a psychopath in real life either, <laughs> you know? So I guess that it's that fighting against your, your nature because you become so immersed in the world that, you know, it's like you're making decisions based on your, your own morality, even what you know, unconsciously while you're playing the game, because because you kind of shut out things and play. That's that's part of why many of us love playing because you're you know, it's that time you shut down and you don't have to think about the sixty five million other things that you actually have to do in real life for the rest of the week. So if you get that two hours during the week, you kind of shut down. But because you're not really thinking, you're just using your instincts as you go through, you tend to go towards a way. And then when you start thinking about it, you're like, Oh, would I do that in real life? You know, kind of feel, so I don't know. That's, I don't know if the, any of that made any sense, but that's, yeah, that's what I think about. it. <laughs> so I would do the quest just to, to experience it. That would be my suggestion. Um, but yeah, I definitely had an uneasy, uneasy feeling doing it. I even had an uneasy feeling doing the the, the house in uh, Markarth where you have to kill the guy, you know, uh, Molok Bal, that quest. I even had, the first time I played that, I'm like, really? I could have whacked the guy for no reason. I mean, come on. Because that character I was playing was pretty much good, straight through. So I'm like, come on, Really? I probably could have played that a different way. So my first character or two, I played pretty cleanly. You know, the typical stuff. Not I didn't even do a lot of pickpocketing on those. So, yeah, it was it was pretty clean I played that one. And that that's why I wanted to get so different with this one. But it is, it is hard uh, playing opposite of what you think the character should do. So, but yeah, I would definitely do the quest just to check it out, though. That's all I have to say about that now. Now that I've said something about that for about 10 minutes, and I don't know if any of it made any sense, but I certainly talked for 10 minutes about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, that's all I got. I think I'm actually going to go play some Skyrim right now. Uh, sounds like the Hot Wheels race has ended. I'm not sure who won. I'll fill you all in next time on that. And uh, until next... Oh, and the... For uh, those of you who may not know, the <laughs> the uh, Elder Scrolls Anthology came out, I believe, for PC, which is uh, awesome. And if I had a, um, and if I had a P, if I played on PC, I would be picking that up. 
So those of you who picked that up and are playing it and are listening, awesome. Thanks for listening. And everybody else who's listening, thanks for listening. Uh, I do this uh, every once in a while because I really enjoy it. And I enjoy playing the game. So uh, join up, join us up on the Facebook group where we'll talk about it. And uh, that's all I got for now. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>